Okay guys, so welcome to what's become an annual tradition here on my channel and that is the yearly Bait Finesse Olympics. And this year it's going to be all Bait Finesse. Now a few years ago at the, I guess, early stages of my channel, I actually did something similar. I had a big seven way Bait Finesse shootout and the winner of that particular shootout was this reel right here. The 2015 Shimano Aldebaran BFS XG Limited. Now after that shootout I told myself I would never ever do a cast battle of that magnitude again because I ran into so many problems it took several days and several hours to film it. But one thing I've learned in life is never say never and this year the bait finesse olympics features a whopping 14 reels and the reason it's featuring 14 reels is because we just have so many awesome choices for bait finesse reels these days so we got reels that are usdm of course we have jdm reels we have aliexpress chinese market reels and we have a reel that you can only buy in South Korea. And as far as I know, all these reels are still available for sale today. So without further ado, let me show you the participants. Now the first competitor is the Fishman Clamber Hyper Micro. Now this reel features a 6.3 gram spool that is 34 millimeters in diameter and it features a static magnetic brake system pretty much the generic mag track system you'll find on hundreds of other reels. Now one advantage this reel may have over the others is the fact that as you can see the spool has been modified to narrow the channel where the line lays so that will decrease the friction angle from the top of the spool to the line guide and also this reel is not stock now I have two of these reels one of them is stock and one has ceramic hybrid micro bearings and unfortunately I didn't find out until I got out to the casting field that this is the reel with the ceramic hybrid micro bearings so it's not stock not quite an even playing field for the clamber hyper micro but it is what it is Now the next competitor is the Shimano Corrado BFS. Now the Corrado BFS has a 8.8 .8 gram spool that's 32 millimeters in diameter. It's got a dynamic magnetic braking system in the form of Shimano's FTB or finesse tune brake. And other than that, I don't really see any other standout features for the Corrado BFS that gives it an advantage over any other reel. Now next up is going to be the Cast King Zephyr. Now the Cast King Zephyr features a 7.7 .7 gram spool that is 34 millimeters in diameter and the braking system on this reel is a static magnetic mag track style system. Now the one thing that I see that this reel could have an advantage on over some of the others is that it's got a tapered funnel shaped line guide. So the next reel is going to be Daiwa's Gekabijin Air TW PE Special. Now this reel has a 6.8 gram spool that is a tiny 28 millimeters in diameter. The braking system on this reel is a dynamic magnetic system in the form of Daiwa's air brake. That is the same system found on their SB reels. Now there are some advantages this reel could have over others. The first being the T-wing line guide. The second being, as you can see, the spool has been modified just like the Clamber Hyper Micro to narrow that channel where the line lays. And this reel probably holds the least amount of line out of all the competitors. So when filled with line, this spool is probably going to be the lightest one here. Now next up is the Suronoya Dark Wolf Ultra. 
Now the Dark Wolf Ultra has a 5.3 gram spool. The lightest one in the contest and the lightest stock spool for a bait finesse reel in the world. Now the spool is a tiny 30 millimeters and the Dark Wolf Ultra features a imitation dynamic magnetic system copying Shimano's finesse tune brake. Now a key feature that might give it an advantage over some other reels is that it does have a tapered cone shaped line guide. So next up of course is going to be the Daiwa Alphas Air TW. Now this reel has a 6.2 gram spool that's a tiny 28 millimeters in diameter. It's got the dynamic magnetic air brake system from Daiwa that's similar to the brakes in the SV reels. And the one advantage this reel may have over the others is the T-wing line guide. So next up is going to be the Kiorim Black Knight 2. Now the Black Knight 2 features a 5.5 gram spool which is the second lightest here and it's also a small 30 millimeters in diameter. Now the Black Knight 2 features the same dynamic magnetic brake system as the Dark Wolf Ultra and some other reels in the fact that it is a copy of Shimano's FTB or Finesse Tube brake. Now a couple of things about the Black Knight 2 that can give it an advantage over the other reels is that if you look there it's got a triangular cone shaped line guide or funnel shaped line guide and also the Black Knight 2 features ceramic hybrid spool bearings as standard so yeah the Kia Rim Black Knight 2 So next up is going to be the Doyo Liger 30 BFS spec. Now this reel features one of the heavier spools in this pack coming in at I think 7.3 grams and it's a small 30 millimeters. Now this reel is different than most of the other reels in this contest due to the fact that it has centrifugal brakes. And other than that, I don't really see anything that could give this reel an advantage over any of the other reels. So next up is going to be the Shanghe Lingle. Now the Lingle has a 6.14 gram spool that's 34 millimeters in diameter. And like many other reels in this contest coming from China, it's featuring a dynamic magnetic braking system in the form of a copy of Shimano's FTB. Now one thing about this reel that may give it an advantage over the others is that it's got this I guess triangular pyramidal line guide that's really wide at the back and tapers off to the front to decrease that friction angle. Now next up is going to be the Abu Garcia LX992Z. Now the LX992Z has an 8.4 gram spool which is pretty heavy in this competition and it's also 33 millimeters in diameter. Now the LX992Z's brake system is a static magnetic mag track style system. And the only thing that I can think of that might give this reel an advantage over the others is that the line guide is poked out pretty far, even though it's a standard small one. And I think it's got some kind of upgraded bearings from the factory. So next up should come as no surprise, but it's the Shimano Calcutta Conquest BFS. And the Conquest BFS has a 7.3 gram spool that's 32 millimeters in diameter and it's featuring Shimano's dynamic magnetic finesse tune brake system. Now I really can't think of any advantages this Conquest may have over the other reels other than the stock Shimano spool bearings are just really really good and they are micro as standard. Okay, so next up is the Abu Garcia 
Revo UltraCast BF8. Now the UltraCast features a whopping 10 gram spool which is the heaviest in this contest by far and it's also 32 millimeters in diameter. Now the braking system on the UltraCast is a static magnetic mag track style system and other than that I don't really see any advantages that this reel has over any other reel. Okay, so this should come as no surprise, but the next reel is going to be the new 2022 Shimano Aldebaran BFS. Now the new Aldebaran features a 5.8 to 5.9 gram spool, which is 29 millimeters in diameter, but it's been measured at actually 29 and a half. Now the Aldebaran features the latest and greatest dynamic magnetic brake system from Shimano in the updated FTB and the only advantages I may see this reel having over the others is it's got a funnel shaped tapered line guide and I do believe it's probably got the best bearings out of all these reels even the ones that come with the ceramic hybrids okay so no casting Olympics can be complete without a mystery reel and this year's is no different. Now underneath these white napkins is a reel that I have featured in a couple of videos and I want to see how it stacks up to these other reels when it comes to bait finesse performance. So yeah the last and 14th reel is going to be a mystery reel which I'll reveal to you guys later on in the video of course. So now that you've seen the reels that are participating in this battle let me show you the two lures that I use as well as the line and the rods. Now the first lure is going to be this 3.9 gram cheap AliExpress trout minnow. So this is going to represent the heavier lure and then for the ultralight lure we're using this 1.7 gram so basically a true 1 16th ounce little micro crankbait. And I did not use snap swivels this time around. So we are going to be casting a true 1 16th ounce as well as a true 3.9 grams. Now for the 3.9 gram minnow, the rod that I used is the Major Craft Corza BFS bass rod, six foot five in length with a lure rating of 1 32nd ounce to 1 quarter ounce. And then for the little micro crank I use the ASOC CU double which is 6 foot long and I use the ultralight tip which has a lure rating of 0 0.5 grams to 4 grams. And the line all the reels used is this Bass Pro Shops brand Crappie Max in 4 pound and you can see the line diameter right there. So basically the way this cast battle is going to work is each reel casted each lure three times. So that means we're going to have a total of three winners. We're going to have a winner for the 3.9 gram minnow. We're going to have a winner for the 1.7 gram micro crank. And then we're going to have an overall winner which is going to be determined by taking the averages of both lures for each reel and dividing by two and that's going to give us who our winner is as well as first second third all the way down to last place so with that being said let me show you the casting footage for the 3.9 gram minnow
Okay, so I know a lot of you guys are eager to get to these results due to the contest I was having. So let's get to it. And coming in 14th or last place is going to be the Daiwa Gekabijin Air TWPE Special with an average of 93.92 feet. Now this may come as a huge shock to a lot of people, including myself, but unfortunately the Gekabijin was hampered by its lack of line capacity. Because if you rewind to the cast footage for the Gekabijin, it pretty much casted all its line off right down to the tape. So if it held more line or had better line lay, then I'm sure it could have done a lot better. But could it have won? I'm going to say probably not. So coming in 13th place, we have the mystery reel. And that mystery reel is the Team Lou's Pro SP. And the Pro SP averaged 100.19 feet. So coming in 12th place is a pretty big disappointment considering its price. And that is the Abu Garcia LX992Z with an average of 103.37 feet. So considering this reel cost almost $400 when I bought it, that is a huge disappointment considering the cost of the reels that beat it. Now coming in 11th place is actually the cheapest reel of the bunch. And that is the Cast King Zephyr with an average of 103.95 feet. So as you can see, price doesn't always equate to better casting as the Zephyr beat out much more expensive reels. Now coming in 10th place with yet another butt triggering moment is the Daiwa Alphas Air TW with an average of 104.38 feet. Now that's actually excellent considering the size of the spool, but in this company, it's only good for 10th place. Now coming in 9th place, and probably one of the bigger surprises of this battle, is the Abu Garcia Revo Ultracast BF-8. And it averaged 107.24 feet. So the BF-8 actually has the heaviest spool in this group tied with the Pro SP, but it actually did a lot better, probably due to the fact that it holds a lot less line than the Pro SP. So coming in eighth place is the Shimano Crotto BFS. And the Crotto averaged 109.54 feet. Now just barely beating the Crotto BFS is the Kiorim Black Knight 2 with an average of 109.62 feet. Now considering how much lighter the spool is of the Black Knight 2 and it pretty much tied with the Corrado, I think that really speaks volumes for the performance of the Corrado BFS. Now coming in sixth place is the Fishband Clamber Hyper Micro with an average of 112.69 feet. Now remember, this is the clamber that I have that had the ceramic hybrid micro bearings. And if you watch the video I did on that, the bearings actually caused the clamber to lose a little bit of distance. So potentially the clamber could have done much better. But even still, it came in sixth place. So coming in fifth place is gonna be my precious, otherwise known as the Doyo Liger 30 BFS spec and it averaged 113.48 feet. Now more on that later. So coming in fourth place is the Shanghai Lingle with an average of 114.50 feet. So this budget AliExpress reel beat 10 other reels and a lot of them were a lot more expensive. Okay, so we're getting to the top three now for the 3.9 gram minnow. And coming in third place is the Suranoia Dark Wolf Ultra with an average of 114.66 feet. So just barely beating out the clamber. Now this third place makes the Dark Wolf Ultra the highest placing AliExpress Chinese bait finesse reel in this particular contest. 
Okay, so we're getting down to the top two. And coming in second place is the 2022 Shimano Aldebaran BFS with an average of 115.05 feet. So just barely beating out the Dark Wolf Ultra. Now, in case you're wondering why I didn't use my right-handed model, I ended up using the left-handed model because I feel, since I fished it a few times already, it's probably settled in. So that leaves just one real first place. And have you guys figured out which one it is yet? Because this kind of surprised me. And that is the Shimano Calcutta Conquest BFS with an average of 117.37 feet. So this pretty much five year old reel dusted off all these newer, much lighter spooled reels. And this is pretty much an equal performer to the old 2016 Aldebaran BFS. Now I knew this reel would do good, but I didn't think it would take the win. So it shows you that even the older generation Shimano technology still dominates. Now let's go over some observations. Now it was windy the day that I did the 3.9 gram Mino battle. So these distances are probably exaggerated by about at least five feet. And one thing that really surprised me was that with these two reels right here, the Black Knight 2 and the Dark Wolf Ultra, I was actually able to cast this lure with no problems at all. And that was even with the spool tension setting to just minimize the side to side play. And on both reels, I could actually even go down to like the number four setting on the brakes, somewhere around there. And that really surprised me. I thought I would have to tighten up the spool tension and, and do a bunch of adjustments, but no, the Dark Wolf Ultra and the Black Knight 2 behaved perfectly in the 3.9 gram minnow cast battle. So of course, now it's time to get to the casting footage of the 1 16th ounce ultralight crankbait.
Now before we get to the results, I just want to say that arguably the results of casting this 1.7 gram micro crank might be more important than the 4 gram minnow because let's face it there are a lot of non BFS reels out there today that can cast a 4 gram minnow. So with that being said, coming in last place is the mystery reel Team Lose Pro SP with a pretty bad average of 43.62 feet. Now I attribute that to the fact that the Pro SP tied the Ultracast BF8 as having the heaviest spool here at 10 grams, but it also has the deepest spool here and it holds a lot more line than the other reels. So when filled with line, the Pro SP spool is probably significantly heavier than the others and it really showed with that poor average of 43.62 feet and the accuracy was awful. But keep in mind, this is not designed as a bait finesse reel and it would do a lot better if you filled the lineup only halfway, like I did in the, I guess, bait finesse test video for this reel. So coming in 13th place, and this is a big shocker for me, and that is the Doyo Liger 30 BFS spec with an average of 51.63 feet. And I attribute that to the fact that I've never even cast this reel up until this Bay Finesse Olympics. So it hasn't been broken in yet. Now with more fishing time, I'm sure that it will cast better, but it is what it is. So coming in 12th place and continuing to disappoint somewhat is the Abu Garcia LX992Z with an average of 51.97 feet. But in the reel's defense, this is actually a bass reel and it wasn't designed to throw the super lightweight lures. But still pretty disappointing considering the price. So coming in 11th place and another really big shock is going to be the Suranoi Dark Wolf Ultra with an average of 53.87 feet. And what's shocking about that is not only is that distance pretty poor, but I actually had to tighten up the spool tension knob and run max braking just to get the reel to behave enough to do three casts. So a complete turnaround versus casting the 3.9 gram minnow. And what's also disappointing is that this reel has the lightest spool here. So in my opinion, this reel should have been fighting out for first place with the 1 16th ounce micro crank. So coming in 10th place is a pretty pleasant surprise, and that is Cast King Zephyr with an average of 54.31 feet. And that's pretty impressive considering this has one of the heavier and taller spools in this contest. So coming in 9th place is the Lingle. Now this is another reel that has a pretty big spool but it still averaged 57.87 feet and the word is that there is going to be a new lingo coming out so i can't wait to see that now coming in eighth place is the kirin black knight 2 with an average of 58.50 feet and just like the dark wolf ultra i had to tighten up the spool tension and run max break just to get what i would consider three clean casts and just like the Dark Wolf Ultra, it's kind of disappointing as I was expecting this reel to be fighting it out for first place, casting this micro crank. Now coming in seventh place, and this is a pretty big shocker, that is the Abu Garcia Revo Ultracast BF8 with an average of 59.43 feet. So this is a shocker because this, once again, is tied with the Pro SP as having the heaviest spool here. So now we're getting into the reels that broke the 20 yard average barrier and coming in 6th place is the Fishband Clamber Hyper Micro with an average of 60.01 feet. And once again it was the clamber that had the ceramic hybrid micros. So potentially if I use the stock clamber it might have done better. So coming in 5th place with yet another butt triggering moment 
is the Daiwa Alpha Air TW with an average of 61.30 feet. Now I will say this, the Alpha's Air, the Aldebaran BFS and the Gekka Vision all seem to cast the micro crank a lot more, I guess, naturally than the other reels. But even with its tiny 28 millimeter spool, the Alpha's Air was relegated to fifth place. Now here's a big shocker, coming in fourth place is the Shimano Corrado BFS with an average of 62.45 feet. So it beats out the much more expensive Alphas that has a much lighter and smaller spool. And I attribute this placing to just the fact that I think Shimano's FTB brakes are superior to Daiwa's Mag4 system. So good on the Corrado BFS, I thought it would place a lot lower than it did casting this micro crank. Okay, so we're getting to the top three reels and coming in third place is the Shimano Calcutta Conquest BFS with an average of 63.03 feet, just barely beating out the Corrado. So it goes from coming in first place in the last battle to coming in third place in this battle. Okay, so that leaves just two reels and can you figure out which ones they are? Now, redeeming itself from its last place finish in the previous cast battle is the Daiwa Gekabijin Air TWPE Special with an average of 66.12 feet. So the fact that it holds such little line actually helped it out when throwing this ultralight lure. So that means there can only be one reel left and that makes the winner of the 1.7 gram micro crank battle, the 2022 Shimano Aldebaran BFS with an average of 66.40 feet. So just barely beating out the Gekka Bijin. And like I said before, the Aldebaran, the Gekka Bijin, and the Alpha Zair TW, because they have the smallest spools here and some of the lightest, they seem to cast that little micro crank easier than a lot of the other reels. So let's go over some of my observations real quick. And the first observation is that these cast distances were very disappointing. They're easily at least five to 10 feet short of what I expected, especially with the rod that I used. But I will say this, the rod is shorter than the previous times that I casted this lure by about half a foot. And I don't know if this was a factor or not, but I filmed that cast battle in between heavy rainstorms and it was super muggy out there. So I'm not sure if the moisture in the air affected the distance, but if I went out there on a dry day using, I guess, a longer rod like the six foot five Corza, you could probably add at least five to eight feet to these averages. Now, one more thing I wanted to bring up was that while the Gekka Bijin barely came in second place, it did have the longest cast at just a hair over 70 feet while the longest cast for the Aldebaran was like 68 feet, but the Aldebaran was just more consistent with its other two casts. So with that being said, let's get to the overall winner. Okay, so now it's time to determine the overall standings, including third, second, and the overall winner of the 2022 Bay Finesse Olympics. Now, not surprisingly, coming in 14th place is the Mystery Reel Team Lose Pro SP with a two lure average of 71.90 feet. But I will say this if you have a Pro SP and you want to bait finesse with it, all you got to do is fill the line not even halfway, and that will really wake this reel up when it comes to casting ultralight lures. Of course, you have to have the appropriate rod and line, but check out my bait finesse test on this reel, and that video will show you what this reel is truly capable of. But in this company, it's only good for last place. Now, coming in 13th place, or next to last, is the $400 Abu Garcia LX992Z with a two lure average of 77.67 feet. 
Now this reel also could benefit from not filling the line up all the way, but when you cost nearly $400, I expected better performance out of this reel. So coming in a proud 12th place is the Cast King Zephyr with a two lure average of 79.13 feet. So when you consider this has probably one of the heavier spools here, one of the biggest spools here, and it's the cheapest reel here, I think 12th place is a great showing for the Zephyr, considering the killers that it had to go up against. Now the butt triggerings just keep on coming because coming in in overall 11th place is the Queen of the Night, Daiwa Gekabijin Air TWPE Special with a 2 lure average of 80.02 feet. And obviously this poor placing is due to the fact that the spool holds such little line and the fact that when you do fill it up all the way the line will bunch up to the sides leaving this big concave valley which causes this Gekabijin to not hold enough line to cast heavier lures. So if you can somehow fix the line lay issue Daiwa this reel would have placed better. Now would it have won? Probably not but it would have placed better than 11th that's for sure which is disappointing considering its price. Now coming in 10th place is another disappointment and that is the Doyo Liger 30 BFS spec with a two lure average of 82.55 feet and I'll be honest with you guys going into this battle I strongly felt that this reel was gonna win the whole thing with no problem but I was wrong but more on this reel in future videos. So now it's time for the final butt triggering and that's because coming in ninth place is the Daiwa Alpha's Air TW with a two lure average of 82.84 feet. So coming in and overall eighth place is the Abu Garcia Revo Ultracast BF8 with a two lure average of 83.33 feet. A great showing for the Revo Ultracast as this one of the cheaper JDM reels here and of course like I said before it's tied with the Pro SP as having the heaviest spool here. So coming in in overall seventh place is going to be the other rainbow colored reel the Kirin Black Knight 2 with a two lure average of 84.06 feet. Now coming in seventh place overall and not surprisingly so is the Black Knight 2's twin brother the Soranoia Dark Wolf Ultra with an average of 84.26 feet so pretty much on par with the Black Knight 2 and I'm gonna do a break fix video for this reel as well as the Black Knight 2 in the future so if you're interested in either of these two reels be on the lookout for that. Now coming in fifth place and showing us what an overall great BFS value it is. It's going to be Shimano's Corrado BFS with a two lure average of 85.99 feet. And I attribute this placing to the fact that Shimano's technology actually works. So coming in an overall fourth place, it's going to be the prettiest reel here and that is the Shanghai Lingle with an average of 86.185 feet. So a great showing for the Lingle and it kind of shows us what a bigger lighter spool can do with an imitation Shimano FTB system. Okay guys, here we go. This is the top three reels overall. And this is gonna determine the winners of the Bait Finesse Reel Giveaway Contest. And coming in third place, and surprisingly so is the Fishman Clamber Hyper Micro with a two lure average of 86.35 feet. And once again, I use the clamber that I had that had the ceramic hybrid micros. So if I use the regular clamber, this reel could have potentially won the whole thing. But a great showing from the Fishman Clamber. And I've stated in the past that this reel was designed to take out Japan's very best and it looked like it fulfilled its mission for the most part. Okay, so coming in second place overall, and I don't know why this surprised me because it shouldn't, 
is Shimano's mighty Calcutta Conquest BFS with a two lure average of 90.2 feet. So even though this reel is competing with the LX992Z as the most expensive reel here, it's proven it's actually worth its price. So that means the winner of the 2022 Bay Finesse Olympics is going to be the new 2022 Shimano Aldebaran BFS with a two lure average of 90.725 feet. So just barely beats out the conquest. And to be honest, this shouldn't shock anybody considering what Shimano's done to this reel. It improved its lightweight lure casting abilities, but also kept its heavier lure long cast capabilities as well. So truly overall, this reel is the best Bay Finesse reel in the world, at least until the new Xenon LTX shows up, which unfortunately hasn't come out yet, or I definitely would have included it in this battle. Okay, so to wrap this video up, let's go over my final thoughts and observations. Now, the first observation is that the reel that I thought was easily going to win this entire cast battle, which was the Doyo Liger 30, not only did it not win, it didn't even come in the top five. And another reel that I thought was going to come in either the top three or the top five came in dead last, and that's the Lose Pro SP. And the reason I thought these reels would do so good is because both of them have centrifugal brakes. And this shows me not all centrifugal brakes are created equal. Now the next observation is something that I've brought up in the past several times is that super lightweight spools, like the ones that come in the Dark Wolf Ultra and the Black Knight 2, they don't matter unless you have a good strong consistent brake system. So these two reels had the lightest spools here by far, 5.3 grams, 5.5 grams, but the brakes were so inconsistent, easily casting the 3.9 gram minnow, but struggling with the 1.7 gram micro crank. It really hurt the overall placings for both of these reels. As in my opinion, if the brakes worked, they could have been battling for the win, if not the top five. But as you can see, they had to settle for 6th and 7th place, getting beaten by reels with much heavier spools, but much better brakes. Now the next observation is that with today's technology, price really doesn't matter when it comes to casting performance for Bay Finesse reels. Because we have the most expensive reel in the contest, the Abu Garcia LX992Z, and then we have the cheapest reel in the contest, the Casking Zephyr. And the Zephyr beat the Abu with both the 3.9 gram minnow and the 1.7 gram crank. So of course it beat out the LX992Z overall. So we got $70, almost $400 when I bought it. So yeah, price these days does not matter when it comes to BFS casting performance. Now the next observation is that every single reel here made a noise during the cast, some of them louder than others, but the one reel that was pretty much silent, smooth, and had the fastest spool was the new 2022 Shimano Aldebaran BFS. Even the Daiwa Alpha's Air TW was loud in comparison when casting back to back with Aldebaran. Now speaking of Daiwa, that brings me to my next observation. Now with the Alpha's Air coming in only 9th place and the more expensive Gekka Bijan coming in at 11th place, will Daiwa do something or come out with a new line of Bay Finesse reels that will long cast heavier lures better? Or even long casting lighter lures better? Because while when it came out, the Alpha's Air could easily cast the 1 gram trout magnet, there are reels out there now that are just as good or better at casting the trout magnet, but they don't suffer at casting the heavier lures long ways as well. So hopefully Daiwa will respond with maybe an updated version of the Alphas or the Steez or the Gekabichin that has a less restrictive braking system. Maybe something with Mag4Z or maybe they can even apply the 
SV Boost to a Bay Finesse reel because that's what's really holding these reels back. Well guys, that's it for my thoughts and observations. Right now is truly a great time to be into Bay Finesse as we have so many options right now and even more coming on the way like the new Xenon LTX that can cast from one gram on up and a lot of them are affordable. Bay Finesse is no longer just a rich man's game because as you can see by these results there are budget options out there that cast just as good as the expensive JDM reels. So I hope you guys enjoyed this huge 14 reel BFS cast battle. I got a pretty good sunburn on my neck trying to film it, but luckily for the most part it went pretty smooth. Now I'm heading on vacation. I'm going to be driving across the country, cutting through Colorado and eventually ending up in California. But I'm going to be doing some trout fishing and hopefully I'll be sharing some of that footage with you guys. But after I return from vacation, I will be announcing the winners of the 5 Reel BFS contest giveaway. Alright guys, thanks a lot.